For those who live in the cities, have you ever wondered how cattle, sheep, and pigs are transported from farms in rural areas and overseas to abattoirs in cities, where they are processed and sold to the general public like you and me? If you think these animals just magically appear in your cities, you are in for a huge reality shock. There is a whole process by which these animals are moved from the farms where they are reared to major cities where they are consumed. There has always been a saying which goes, if only pigs could fly. That phrase is often used to describe impossible things you are sure can't happen. However, when it comes to livestock transportation, pigs just might be able to fly. And so can other livestock like cattle and sheep. The whole process of livestock transportation might seem unusual to most people, but you have to know that not every city in the world has all the animals they want. Some of these animals have to be transported from international owners to these lacking countries. Transporting livestock from one country to another could be for different reasons, such as breeding, slaughter, auction, fairs, rodeos, grazing, and livestock shows. However, this practice isn't new, and it has been practiced for centuries. Millions of years ago, the primary means of livestock transportation was droving, with the reasons being for seasonal grazing or to bring them to a market of one form or another. With droving, the distances traveled were usually only a few miles, which might increase in economic conditions. In archipelagos and island regions, transporting livestock by boat has been the norm since ancient times, even though the scale of such transport was quite limited. With the advent of the 17th century, larger ships were incorporated into livestock transportation, making livestock transportation by sea easier, faster, and more scalable. By the 19th century, the introduction of railways and canal barges made livestock transportation by land much easier, faster, and more scalable. Today, on Need for Knowledge, we go behind the scenes to see how livestock are transported within the country and internationally. History's first recorded event of livestock transportation by sea took place in around 1607 on an English ship known as the Susan Constant possibly Sarah Constant, captained by Christopher Newport, which was conveying Jamestown-bound colonists. As time went by and the New World developed, many supply ships from England transported livestock as regular cargo. Thanks to livestock transportation, purebred livestock was imported to Plymouth, Massachusetts, Philadelphia, and Pennsylvania. Around the year 1700, Cattle and packed meat transportation frequently left the port of Philadelphia, bound for the West Indies. However, livestock fatalities would often reach 50% or more. This was usually attributed to poor feed supply, overcrowding of the animals, and rough seas and storms. The 19th century brought about an increase in livestock transportation, especially in America, as the first shipment of cattle to Chicago by rail car took place in 1867 using the Kansas Pacific Railway. This shipment contained about 20 carloads of Longhorns from Texas, which left the rail yard located at Abilene, Kansas, with their destination set for the Chicago stockyards. This event transformed the face of the livestock industry as cows from Texas were taken to the rail yards for delivery to major feeders, processors, and packers. In the 19th century, cattle trails were carefully selected to reduce distance and boost feed to fatten and sustain cattle. Cowboys were employed to gather, drive, and hold the cows at major buying stations, and they reported root trail fatalities of around 3%. With the railroad expansion, processors increased exponentially and refrigeration technology developed as a refrigerated rail car was patented in 1867. The need to drive live cattle came to an end and the cattle drive trail vanished in 1889. Refrigerated transports were improved and this gave birth to the dressed meat market. The dressed meat market experienced a great boom which caused the need to transport live cattle by railways to reduce slowly and ultimately become economically unfeasible. 
With the advent of the 20th century, railroads were the main method of transportation in the dressed meat market, and the commodity trucking industry had just begun to function. Halfway through the 20th century, the refrigerated trailer was built for commercial trucking, and as a result, the transportation of processed meats was done mainly by the trucking industry, and livestock hauling trailers for motor trucks became the next best thing. The railroads ultimately fell into despair, and they couldn't offer as many options for livestock transportation. Transporting live cattle by truck was considered much more humane and economical, and provided more options for moving cattle to feeders, processors, and auctions. The commercial trucking industry helped to build an interconnected transportation system throughout the United States. The advancement of extensive, convenient, affordable livestock trucking brought an end to widespread droving on public roads in several countries. And this transition took place between the 1910s and the 1940s. This transition also coincided with the transition of public roads in these countries, as they went from being pedestrian focused to motor vehicle dominated rights of way. In other words, the notion that cattle and other livestock don't belong in the roadway wasn't a thing until automobiles became dominant and widespread. However, droving on public roads remained very vital in several regions or countries, even though it is usually done on a small scale today. The 21st century has brought a lot of change to livestock transportation, and things have developed to a large extent. There was a time in the 1990s when the United Kingdom was exporting roughly 2.5 million livestock per year to continental Europe, using either the sea or land route. However, by 2012, that number had dropped substantially to about 55,000 livestock per year. Another major livestock transporter is Australia, and according to the Australian Livestock Exporters Council, this country exported about 2 million live sheep over 1.3 million live cattle, and over 89,000 live goats for either breeding or feeding purposes in 2015 alone, mostly by sea transport or air transport. The European Union also has a large livestock export trade, mostly to North Africa and the Middle East. As of July 2016, the world's largest livestock carrier was the MV Ocean Drover formerly known as the MV Bacru, which is able to transport approximately 18,000 cattle or 75,000 sheep. The ship comes with an air ventilation system and cushioned floors for its livestock pens, amongst other amenities. It's fair to say that MV Ocean Drover, having been made for live animals from the ground up, is quite advanced from an animal welfare point of view. Currently, most live animals and processed meat are mainly transported within the country by trucking companies that have specialized trailers for this purpose, as well as using cargo ships and cargo planes for international livestock transport. However, the movement of animals through droving or herding is still used in more remote or rural areas. There have also been regulations imposed on livestock transportation due to concerns about animal welfare so as to limit the animal's suffering and protect the shippers' livelihoods. For example, the UK has taken regulations from the EU since 2007, which detailed the required conditions of livestock vessels and the strict documentation needed, among other things. Also, the Australian trade is regulated by the Australian standards for the export of livestock which defines welfare requirements for the livestock transportation industry from farm to delivery of animals in the country of export. Thank you for watching this episode of Need for Knowledge, and we will see you in the next one. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for new videos.